Hey guys, Dr. Isabella Wentz here. Um, today is day six of the thyroid secret. This episode, we're talking about the stress and thyroid connection. Um, if you are watching me for the first time, my name's um, Dr. Isabella Wentz. I'm a clinical pharmacist. I'm the author of um, Hashimoto's The Root Cause. I'm creator of the thyroid secret and also the author of the New York of the new book coming out, Hashimoto's Protocol, that's gonna be coming out on March 28th. Um, if you guys are just joining me right now, um, I'd love to let me know where you're from. And let me know what your, um, your name is and where you're joining me from. I just did a Facebook Live about two hours ago. Unfortunately, I found out that got deleted on and I know a lot of you guys are watching it live and some of you guys are also watching it after it airs um, live and so I wanted to go ahead and re-record and answer any additional questions that you might have for me tonight. Um, so tonight's episode of the thyroid secret was about stress and so stress is a really really big potential thyroid trigger. This is something that can very much make or break us when we have a thyroid condition. In 2015 I surveyed my readers and stress was one of the most common things that people were um, reporting was one of the things that was making them feel bad and feel worse when they had a thyroid condition. Um, what's more is when they found stress reducing strategies, this helped them feel better. Um, if you're just joining, Thyroid Secrets is a documentary series that I've created over the last year to show you the path to recovering, recovering your health when you have a thyroid condition. And this documentary is free online right now from March 1st through March 9th. And um, you can watch it for free. There, I have a link here in the description of this Q&A as well as on behind me if you see that, tinyurl.com TTSE6. So this is an episode that's really, really important and it covers the big connection that we have between the thyroid disorder and our stress response. And hey, Andrea, you're back on, online. Great to see you. Um, so. We had um, a little bit of a, speaking of stress, um, I'll tell you guys a little, little bit of a story, but um, first I want to just to kind of say hi to who's here. So Sherry from Port Orange, Florida, Trev from New Zealand, amazing, Lorraine from Illinois, Linda from Tampa, Anju from Michigan, and marie from New Jersey. Um, Amanda, fellow Farm D, love to have you here, and she's loving the documentary. Thanks so much for your kind words. Andrea says, you're back. Yes, um, there is a story behind this and um, it just irony at its finest. I'd love to share this with you guys. Um, Lisa says, keep out the amazing work. Thanks so much from Ontario. Victoria from Georgia. Um, Annalise said, I heard that most Hashimoto sufferers are also celiac. Would you love your thoughts on this? So um, anywhere from one to 15% of people with Hashimoto's will also have celiac disease. Here's the kicker though. You don't have to have celiac disease to be gluten-free. 88% um, of people with Hashimoto's feel significantly better when they get off of gluten, even when they don't have celiac disease. So, um, so what you heard is kind of right and wrong. Um, so about 15, up to 15% of people with Hashimoto's will have celiac disease, but as many as 90% are gluten sensitive, which means that they need to cut gluten out of their diets. Um, Annalise, um, thanks so much for your question. Rosa from New York. Uh, Maya, welcome back. Hi, Maya. Nice to see you again. Um, Kathy from Ohio. Tuba says, good work. Thank you so much. Roxanne, I have watched every episode so far. Great to hear that. I'm glad you love it. Lori from Iowa. Anne-Marie from New Zealand. Um, and she got her blood drawn for T3, T4, TSH, and thyroid antibodies and cortisol. Really great to hear that. Um, one of the things I was chatting with, um, with my secret Facebook um, live community, because unfortunately that Facebook live is no longer accessible, is um, that I love how you guys are really taking action for the thyroid secret and taking and implementing some of the strategies. Um, I would be so happy if every one of you just changed one thing, just took one little thing that resonated with you from the thyroid secret. And within that one change, you're going to see an improvement in your health. And the more changes you take on, the more improvements you're going to see. So really excited for you. Um, Sandy says, glad you're back. Um, nice to see you, Sandy. Um, Shauna says, here again. Hello, Shauna. Um, Denise from Wisconsin. Craig from Kansas. Patty from Missouri. Um, Andrea says she loved the episode. Thank you so much. Pamela from Nashville. Chris from Rochester. 
Wendy from Canada. Um, she said, loved all the information. Thank you so much. Nat from Barbados. Really? That sounds amazing. Um, Heather from Edmonton. Um, if you guys didn't know, I'm in Colorado right now, so I'm like living vicariously through all of you guys who are living somewhere warm. Although I love, um, I love Colorado. It's quite an amazing place to be. I've got, um, like 300 days of sunshine, beautiful mountains, and really good food all around and really good people. Ruthie from Texas, Kaya from Sweden. Hello, Kaya. We've got Bonnie from Ontario, Laura from Missouri, recently diagnosed with Graves, so I'm really, really glad that you're here and you're educating and empowering yourself. Go, Laura. Like, I'm so glad you're here and I hope that you take away um, some wonderful resources. Um, Dr. Erica Sainsky is a wonderful um, wonderful doctor who was able to recover his health with Graves disease and now that's she helps others do the same um, let's see we have Tuba from New York and Holly from California Denise hey there again from Alabama hello Denise nice to see you on here so um, today's episode is on stress if you guys haven't seen today's episode you can um, click the watch button here and then um, I know some of you guys are back and you, you guys watched me two hours ago and some of you guys are new. So um, just kind of like a funny story or funny kind of circumstance or irony, whatever you want to call it. Um, we had kind of a stressful day here at the Thyroid Secret today. So in, it started off with us finding out that um, some people were not getting our emails from um, that signed up during the original release of the documentary series. And so we corrected that. That was one stressor. And then um, today in the afternoon, right before episode six was released, we found out that some of the links were not working. Um, the way that we have the tech backend set up is that we have various links we send you guys to for each episode so that no single um, link gets overloaded with, with bandwidth. Um, this is what my tech team told me, so don't quote me on this. But um, long story short, some of the links were working and some of the links were not working. And a lot of you guys um, were not able to watch episode five. And you were tuning in and it just kind of was like a little rolly wheel or it just said click here and whatever and nothing was playing. And so um, as soon as we found that out, um, I jumped and I you know, tried to get the right links to everybody and I started just posting and typing on Facebook and chatting everybody. Um, and then I got banned from Facebook for like, they thought I was a spammer because I was like copying and pasting like as fast as I could. Uh, the new links to everybody so like I run to my husband's computer and we're doing the same thing on my husband's computer and my husband get, gets banned meanwhile like our team is um, trying to answer emails from everybody's like hey things aren't working and so we ended up um, getting the right links we got it resolved um, and I'm so sorry for any stress this has caused you guys um, and we also decided to extend episode five for um, until tomorrow so you guys if you're watching this um, just when you hop off know that episode five is still available episode six is still available tonight So I hope that you'll check this out and I think this will be a great opportunity for you guys to watch that if you haven't had a chance so um, Sometimes tech reasons happen for a reason tech issues happen for a reason and maybe maybe some of you guys really needed to watch episode five and that's um, Now we've extended it so you can take advantage of that um, so that that was like, you know, I thought I thought that was it for the night, right? I was like, okay, so no more issues. We've got like everything's going great. And then we were, then I was doing the Facebook Live, and then halfway through, as I was um, answering your questions and chatting with you guys and just having a really great time connecting with everybody, um, the Facebook got deleted somehow. And so, um, you know, this was a complete accident, and um, it, it just happens. And so I just decided to re-record it to make sure that um, we have an opportunity to answer more of your questions and for anybody that I know is in a different time zone that may want to watch it again. Um, so again, it, it was kind of fun because I was just talking about how to uh, stay composed in stressful situations and I was sharing some of the things that I do and it was like, it was another opportunity to test um, my ability to stay in composure and kind of reach back into my pocket of some of my relaxing strategies. So I have my herbal tea here. I like um, Tension Tamer by um, a company out of Boulder called Celestial Seasonings. This is an herbal tea company. Um, I really like their, their teas because they just kind of help you chill out a little bit and they um, actually have catnip in them which um, apparently doesn't make cats relaxed but makes humans kind of relaxed. Um, 
The other things I always do is I just try to keep things in perspective and try to take some deep breaths um, to try to realize when something's going wrong. Like, is this really a big deal? Is this really like in the grand scheme of things? Like, um, you know, this is not as, as big of a deal. So like, for example, with the links not working, I was thinking about how, um, you know, all these other links work. And then with um, the Facebook live getting deleted, I was just thinking like, you know, that was maybe we just meant to have a nice private private Facebook Live with everybody that was on and and recording it right now is going to give me an opportunity and you guys an opportunity who maybe weren't able to dial in two hours earlier because of work to answer more of your questions. So I'm here for you and I'm really, really excited to, um, to kind of chat and connect with you guys. Um, if you are not watching The Thyroid Secret, you need to be. Um, episode 6 is airing right now. If you go to tinyurl.com ttse6 you'll be able to see that um, and let me know what questions you guys have for me and um, I would also love to hear what you do to stay relaxed and stay um, you know what helps you relax so I know with people with thyroid disease um, stress is one of the biggest triggers of thyroid disease and relaxing strategies seem to be the best for making people feel better. And whenever I work with people with thyroid conditions, and I keep this in all of my books, is I have people write down a list. And it's like, it's kind of, it's, it sounds simple, but it's very, very helpful. And so you take a piece of paper and you divide it in half. And then on one half, write down what makes you feel worse. And then the second half, write down what makes you feel better. And here's the kicker. You do more of what makes you feel better and less of what makes you feel worse, right? And so um, stress is definitely a thing, something that makes people feel worse. Um, not getting enough sleep makes people feel worse. And then on the flip side, doing stress relaxing hobbies and activities is going to help you feel better. So I'd love to hear from you guys what kind of stress reducing activities you take part in. So what are some of your stress reducing activities? For me, um, for me yoga is definitely something that helps. Um, I also like to use the Muse headband, which is um, a headband that you wear on your head and it senses your brain waves and helps to help your body, helps your body tune in to um, feeling and putting yourself in a more relaxed state. And so over time when you do things like meditation or you use the headband or you do neurofeedback, this will put your body in a more relaxed state um, known as the alpha state. So um, one of the triggers for thyroid disease is in any autoimmune disease is actually trauma. Um, so if you had any kind of childhood trauma or any kind of instances where you um, had something bad happen to you, this basically resets your, your pattern, your stress pattern. And then you're more likely to react, you're more likely to be defensive. Um, when you think about what thyroid disease does is it helps us survive in an unfriendly world. Um, when a first when a person first gets diagnosed with the thyroid, when, when thyroid disease initially starts, it's usually going to be an overactive thyroid, whether that's Graves or Hashimoto's. We have this attack on the thyroid gland that rushes thyroid hormones into the bloodstream, and then we have anxiety and palpitations and all kinds of symptoms like that that sort of make us hypervigilant, more likely to fight and be anxious, right? Um, and this, in a way, can be protective if we're in a dangerous situation. The problem is when we get stuck there. Um, and, and that tends to happen for people with thyroid disease. Um, a lot of times we will be more anxious, we will be more defensive, we'll be um, hypervigilant I think is a really, really great way to put it where we just kind of feel like something is happening in the world around us. Um, for me, um, meditation and yoga and neurofeedback and the Muse headband, these are some strategies that have helped me realize um, how I was responding to the outside world and help to put me in a more relaxed and calm state. So, for example, with um, with different things, you know, I would look at them through my own filters, and I was assuming that some people were being rude or that they were they were um, being mean to me. Whereas, for example, they were they were just you know maybe tired or frustrated. And when you do practices like yoga, like meditation, this allows you to have more of that um, kind of few second mark where you can have um, an ability to not react, but just kind of take a take a deeper look and say, "Hey, how is this affecting me? Um, am I using my filter for this? And how do you know how do I live my best life? And how do I interact in this world in a way that doesn't stress me out more?" So, 
Let's see here. Let's see, all of you guys have such great suggestions on how you relax. Would love to hear about it. Um, Chaga tea relaxes me, says David. That sounds great. Anju um, says all the episodes, like, episodes are life-changing, so glad to hear that. Um, Rose wants to know, Rosa wants to know, how does yoga help you stay relaxed during, throughout the day? Um, so, you know, it's really interesting because you could do yoga or you could do meditation or anything just a few minutes a day. But that kind of trains your body not to react. So with neurofeedback, the way that it works is I have um, electro, you have electrodes that sense your brain, and then you listen to music that's relaxing. And then as soon as your brain gets into like an anxious state, then um, the neurofeedback music changes, and then your, your brain automatically wants to go back to like the nice music. And so it, it, your brain kind of learns how to shift really quickly into a relaxed state. So... For me, it's been um, really amazing to have this resiliency where um, if there's something stressful or upsetting, um, I don't get stuck there where I can be, um, you know, like in a situation where um, I feel threatened or, you know, like an accident or something bad happens, but I, my brain is able to say like, okay, well, this is a situation, I need to address it and then shift back into a more relaxed state. And as you um, do that more often, your brain becomes more resilient and it could shift back rather than getting stuck in like that paranoid fight or flight, which is quite frankly where I used to live um, for most of my life. You know, I um, remember when I was working um, in my 20s and somebody would come into my office, I would like nearly jump out of my seat because I was scared. Um, there were times in my life that I, um, you know, I'm an immigrant. I moved to the United States when I was nine and um, didn't live in a very safe neighborhood growing up and um, just had a lot of instances in my life where I, I personally did not feel safe. Um, I was always little and um, kind of skinny and not, you know, not really one that was able to defend myself. And when I was um, growing up in Poland, I know there were some situations where I felt threatened by people um, around me. Um, luckily, I had an older big brother who always protected me, but it was still, it, it you know, taught me at a very early age that I, um, the world was not a safe place. And so I kind of had this hypervigilant thing. And this can be very much true and resonant for a lot of people with thyroid disease. So, um, you know, I, I really, really encourage you guys to take a deep look at that if trauma is something that you've had in your life. Um, you do need to um, you do need to figure out a way for your brain to be less reactive, and that's going to be a practice. Or um, and or, I recommend doing something like EMDR, which can be very very helpful for resetting your stress response. Um, Shauna says, "Sorry for all of your tech issue difficulties. Thanks for doing it again. Such powerful information. Oh, thanks so much for the feedback. I really needed to hear that tonight. I really appreciate it." Maya says, "Come to visit Arizona. You'll get plenty of vitamin D." So um, great. Uh, this is an open invitation from I Maya, you guys. Come to Arizona. It's sunny there. I know um, I had a chance to live there and I loved it. Um, Christy wanted to know if we can buy any of these episodes on DVD. Um, Christy, you can. So the DVD package, I'm really, really proud of it. Um, this is it here. It's quite beautiful. It says the thyroid secret and has this beautiful, mysterious um, woman on the front that I helped pick out, and then the DVDs are quite beautiful as well. You could watch these in the comfort of your own home, put them in your DVD player, get some herbal tea, put your feet up. Um, and this is something that we're making available to you guys through, through um, the Thyroid Secret. So we did send some emails out about that, and um, you also, I also have a link for the gold package here too. If you go to tinyurl.com, TTS Gold, and that's also in the description of this Facebook Live event, um, you'll be able to pick up some DVD sets. And we have uh, the gold package actually comes with every single interview that we did um, throughout the Thyroid Secret. So this is um, nine episodes, nine powerful episodes, and there's about 100 and si there's 167 people that, we interv that I interviewed for the Thyroid Secret, including health experts, researchers, doctors, patients, advocates, as well as patients who've recovered their health. And you'll have access to all of that with the gold package. And um, da -da -da -da, my new book, Hashimoto's Protocol, which is hitting the stores and um, on March 28th and is now available for pre-order 
through my website, thyroidpharmacist.com protocol, where you can get some bonuses. Um, it's also on Amazon. And we're also giving a copy to everybody in the United States who orders the gold package. So really, really excited to share that. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be available outside of the U.S. because it's um, shipping actually separately from the gold package. It's shipping through our publisher, whereas the gold package, we were able to set it up with a company that ships to everywhere in the world. So um, the Hashimoto's Protocol book is a book um, that I wrote to help you take charge of your own health. Um, this has fundamental protocols that help you um, address your liver, adrenals, and gut. The liver protocol can help people feel better in um, about two weeks. 65% of my clients who have gone through this feel significantly better in, in um, two weeks. And then the remaining protocols really focus on resetting your stress response, addressing the health of your gut. These are protocols anybody can do regardless of their root cause. And then the second part of the book fo focuses on more of the specific root causes and triggers. So for example, I have a um, section on how to rebalance traumatic stress. So strategies like EMDR, the, um, uh, the therapy to process stressful, stressful events is, is discussed in there, as well as some of the techniques that I found to be very, very helpful. And so this is something you guys can get. If you get the gold package, we're gonna send you a copy of that, um, my publisher will within um, as soon as it comes out. So let's see you guys. Um, yoga is another really popular thing that people love. Um, Jennifer says, so true trauma. Um, Marina wants to know, what's your thoughts, feedback on birth control and thyroid function? So um, this is a really, really important question. So thyroid, um, thyroid hormones um, can be very much impacted by other kinds of hormones, especially estrogen. We find that changes in estrogen levels are often correlated with the onset of thyroid disease. There was a study in PCOS that found that women with higher estrogen levels were more likely to have um, Hashimoto's. Um, pregnancy, puberty, and perimenopause are gonna be three times when we see changes or new diagnoses of thyroid disease. And birth control pills, because they provide a synthetic form of estrogen for us, actually can produce, um, can actually produce and trigger thyroid disease. So there's not a lot of studies behind this, but the mechanism will work like this. So basically when we have um, estrogen on board, more estrogen, this means that the way that thyroid hormones are bound is gonna be changed. And we're gonna need more to make more thyroid hormones to account for that. And so in the presence of a nutrient deficiency, for example, when our body needs to make more thyroid hormones, the actual process of making thyroid hormones can be inflammatory. And that can cause damage to the thyroid gland, launching the immune system to come and try to like save the thyroid gland. But then um, instead the immune system um, creates an autoimmune response. Now this is known as thyroid mediated autoimmune response. Um, and this is a way like the thyroid gland has a way to sense danger in our environment and has a way of kind of protecting us by shutting down its own function. And so I talk about my safety theory of why women have more thyroid disease. And a lot of it is because of estrogens in the medications that we take, estrogens within our bodies, as well as estrogens in our personal care products. Um, that's one reason. Another reason is because women are oftentimes gonna feel unsafe. Generally, um, being a woman is not as safe as being a man. Um, can't speak for everybody, but there was a survey that was done um, by, I believe the app was called Tinder. I've been married for almost 10 years, so I don't use it. But it was asking the users what their biggest fears were. The female users asked, were, that were asked said their biggest fear was meeting a man that was a complete psycho and that murdered them, right? For the men, the biggest fear was that the woman wasn't gonna be as cute as her profile picture, which is kind of crazy. But when you think about that, being a woman in our world, you know, we're more likely to be abused by our partners compared to men. And there's also something known as battered woman syndrome. So women who have been victims of physical, even mental abuse by their partners, um, and this has been renamed battered person syndrome, um, but women specifically have been found to have higher rates of asthma and fibromyalgia, which are very intimately connected to thyroid disorders. And I bet if researchers looked at thyroid disorders, they'd see that too in, um, in battered women. And so it makes sense that any kind of trauma can put us in a place where we feel unsafe and when we feel like we, um, you know, we want to protect ourselves, right? 
And part of the body's, one of the ways the body protects itself is it helps us become more hypo, more hypothyroid and helps us withdraw from the world and hold on to all that wonderful extra weight, right? Because that's like, helps us survive a famine or helps us to survive a stressful situation. So um, thanks for asking that. Um, we see people talking about meditation, people talking about knitting. That's a really great strategy. I love it. Um, Linda wanted to know if maca is good for Hashimoto's. Yes, maca can be very helpful. I like a product called Feminescence. Um, <clears throat> Shannon wants to know about the headband, if it's good for kids. Yeah, um, the headband is the Muse headband. <clears throat> you know, I don't see why it wouldn't be good for kids. I would look at the website to see what it says. It's M-U-S-E headband. Um, the only reason I could think of potentially why it might not be good for kids is that their, their little heads might be too small. But I know there might be other types of um, neurofeedback or biofeedback devices that can be used for children, um, adults alike, that can be helpful with um, attention deficit disorders, anxiety disorders, um, those kinds of things, and helping the stress response. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Nina also wanted to know the name of the headband, so that's Muse. Um, Patty says she loves doing bar. I love bar as well. Um, and I was saying, um, I actually need to get back to bar. So this is, this will be something that you guys can keep me accountable. I haven't been doing my bar the last couple of months because I was, um, trying to make sure the thyroid secret was a success. I do have a, um, an app where I can do yoga, um, in my home. So I've been doing a lot of that and doing some walks here. Um, green vegetables, anti-thyroid. So green vegetables are going to be very helpful for the thyroid. The only time you would not want to take any green vegetables is if you're going to have potentially SIBO because some of them can be aggravating. Heather says, tuning into sights and sounds of nature. I love that. Like I find hiking and nature really relaxing. Um, not necessarily like climbing mountain hiking, but just kind of walking around um, in my neighborhood, I have a gorgeous hiking trail within a few minutes of where I live where, um, you know, it's nice and flat and I get to just kind of take in the beauty of the outdoors. It's a really great way to do that. Christy wants to know, is there a way to test for low stomach acid? There's not really a really good way to test for low stomach acid other than doing the betaine with pepsin challenge. I do have more information on that on thyroidpharmacist.com if you look for betaine. B-E-T-A-I-N-E. -E. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts on types of exercise, cardio or strength? So, um, Shamra, you know, that's a really great question. We cover that in episode six, and I cover that in Hashimoto's Protocol. So, um, exercise generally should make you feel better after um, let's, let me rephrase this. So exercise, the kind of exercise that's good for you, generally you should feel better after you're finished doing it and then you should be able to feel like, oh, I could do this again, no problem. If you feel worse after exercise, that means that it's too much for you. A lot of times when you have adrenal issues, um, this is gonna mean that you're not gonna be able to tolerate as much um, exercise. So the, the more healthy your adrenals, the more cardio aerobics, bike riding, running, those kinds of things you're gonna be able to tolerate. When your adrenals are sluggish, you're going to have a hard time tolerating exercise. And so for you, um, non-cardio may be best and doing weights, stretching, yoga, um, sometimes bar and Pilates can be very, very helpful. I actually, um, I also do Pilates quite a bit and I found that to be very, very helpful for helping your posture and just building up your muscle mass. Um, one of the things that can happen with um, thyroid disease is we can lose our muscle mass. Um, you know, we gain weight and we lose muscle mass, which is unfortunate. But um, I have to tell you a story of one of my clients. She was, um, and I cover her story in Hashimoto's Protocol, but she was somebody that was doing um, a lot of walking. And she was like, okay, I'm going to lose weight. I'm just going to do like an hour or two of walking a day because that's what she could do. She couldn't really do a lot of other exercise. She was exhausted. And she was also taking some supplements for her adrenals. Um, and when I reviewed her case, I did some adrenal saliva testing for her, and I found that she actually was in the advanced stages of 
adrenal fatigue, so she had low cortisol levels, which meant that her body just wasn't keep making enough cortisol. And this usually means that um, you're going to be very tired. Um, and I find this in 90% of my clients with um, Hashimoto's is they actually are in that stage, the advanced levels of adrenal issues. And so for them, a lot of the supplements for adrenals for, that target lowering cortisol are not going to help. A lot of the recommendations of, you know, exercise and go running, those are going to make them worse. And so in this particular case with this woman, my like prescription for her was to um, stop the supplements that she was taking and then to also um, sleep more, <laughs> you guys will love this, um, eat really good quality foods, do things that relax her and stop doing things that she didn't like and to stop their walking. And she was like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen, blah, blah, blah. She was really worried, but she ended up doing it and her family was on board and she actually was like, she called me excited. She's like, you're not gonna believe this, but I haven't been walking and I'm losing weight. So this is what can happen is your body when you're already in the low adrenal state and um, you know, you're exercising a lot and you're not eating enough and you're not sleeping enough, your body understands this as, ah, oh, we, we, we need to conserve energy, we need to conserve resources, we're stressed out, and then your body makes you more tired and your body makes you hold on to your weight. So this is a really, really important thing to remember um, about the adrenal and thyroid connection. Um, Jennifer says, counseling and inner healing is great for trauma. I totally agree. Um, there's various types of therapies. I really like EMDR that can be very helpful for trauma. Um, Shelby loves yoga. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, Desiree says, how can I get my doctor to test my free, three, free T3? I always, I always get my lisp on that one. Um, you would have to ask your doctor to do it and just ask them to do it. If they're not willing, you may have to find a new doctor. And you can also self-order lab tests. Um, I have some information on that through thyroidpharmacist.com. Vicki wants to know if episode 6 is ready. Yes, episode 6 is ready to play. Um, I do have a place you can register for it. If you go to tinyurl.com, T-T-S-E-6, that will give you a... Um, that will give you a thank you page once you enter in your email and then in the middle of the page there's going to be a link that says schedule. Um, Janelle says DVD program is amazeballs. <laughs> thank you so much Janelle. So I'm glad that you got that. Um, I know we're sending those out um, um, in a couple of days and some people maybe have already started getting them but give it until next week. Casey says I cannot wait to get that book. I'm so excited, Casey. I'm really looking forward to seeing success stories coming out of this book. Um, I, um, you know, this is why I do the work that I do because it's amazing what can happen when people actually have thyroid conditions that um, have all of those things lifted. Like you have the brain fog and fatigue lifted and the weight falls off and it just opens up so many doors and possibilities for you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Marie wants to know, is the series mostly hypo or do we cover Graves? We cover Graves as well. So um, we cover Graves disease, thyroid cancer, thyroid nodules, um, Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, postpartum thyroid issues, as well as thyroid issues in, um, in people and children with Down syndrome, which is a special population um, that is oftentimes ignored by conventional medicine. So oftentimes they'll say, okay, well, you have... Um, you know, the parent will come in and will say, okay, I have, my child is sluggish, my child is, you know, is not growing, my child is overweight, and then the doctors will say, oh, well, it's because your child has Down syndrome. But what the truth is, when we have um, children with Down syndrome and their thyroid hormones are optimized, they can actually thrive and they can feel tremendously better and live the best lives that they can. Um, let's see here. Is it normal to have TPO antibodies? So Melissa, this is a great question, and you wanna have them under one. Generally, under one is considered normal. Um, anything above that means that there's some sort of an inflammatory state in the body. Um, Kim says, Kimber says, PCOS Hashi here. Um, Janelle wants to know about high estrogen or estrogen dominance. So estrogen dominance can definitely be a trigger for thyroid disease. Thanks for asking. 
Um, Terry said, I had no thyroid symptoms until after menopause. That can happen. Mm -hmm. Nicola said, um, hello. Soon says, there you are. Hi, Soon. Nice to see you again. Um, supplements for adrenals from Karen. So um, Karen, yeah, one of the things that I really want to talk about is adrenals and how to support them. So the things that are going to be helpful for the adrenals is making sure you get plenty of sleep. Um, the fastest way to get into adrenal fatigue is to have sleep deprivation. So the fastest way to get out of it is to get plenty of sleep. So I like to recommend something I, I call spa week or spa month, where you take 10 to 12 hours and you sleep um, in a day if possible, um, or in a weekend, or maybe over the course of a week or um, the course of a month. Just give your body an opportunity to sleep as much as it wants. Um, caveat here is you want to make sure that you're not drinking caffeine because caffeine makes us think that we have superpowers and caffeine oftentimes makes us think that um, we should stay up longer than we should. Um, and my personal story with caffeine is I used to be very, very um, anxious and I used to have be the lightest sleeper where if my husband just um, basically rolled over, I would wake up and like freak out, right? And I drank like eight to 10 cups of tea, black tea a day. And I would even drink it at bedtime. And then my husband and my brother were like, uh, Isabella, I don't think you should be drinking all that tea. And I was like, I'm a pharmacist. I know what I'm talking, talking about. You know, you guys are, my brother's an engineer and my husband's, um, you know, a business guy. And I was like, you guys stick to what you know. And of course, um, I ended up going on my health journey and I found that eliminating the caffeine helped me sleep better. I no longer like wake up to every sound um, and I actually can wake up early and have more energy and I have more energy throughout the day when I don't drink eight to 10 cups of caffeine. So this is something that you can do without going to a functional medicine doctor. This is definitely an intervention you can start on right away. So um, that's something to do. Another thing is making sure that you're doing a practice. So whether that's yoga, sewing, meditation, whatever relaxes you, um, do, start doing that every day and just taking time for yourself. Um, maybe doing an Epsom salt bath. I know that was a lot of people's recommendation and um, I love Epsom salt baths, especially you get some nice essential oils in there. Um, another thing I really like that's very relaxing for me and my husband um, teases me about it because I have to have my little foot soak every day and I'll have a little foot soak in the morning where um, I'll put in some essential oils and maybe some Epsom salts. And then I just kind of do some light, deep breathing, and that just makes my whole day start off great. If you do a warm foot bath, it's also a really great way to start some of the circulation within your body with you, when you have an underactive thyroid because, um, you know, before you take your thyroid hormones in the morning, before the hormones kick in, a lot of times um, you may wake up more tired or you may wake up a little bit colder. And so that's another way to get some of that going for you. Um, so, and Teresa says, love your hair up. Oh, thank you so much, Teresa. And for a while, I wasn't wearing it up because I had these little bald spots um, when I was first diagnosed with um, my microphone fell out. Oh. So um, when I was first diagnosed with a thyroid condition, I wasn't putting it up because I had all these bald spots and now I'm able to put it back up. So for anybody that's wondering if they're going to get their hair back, yeah, absolutely. So you want to make sure that you have your adrenals balanced, your nutrients balanced, and once you get these things in order, um, you're going to start feeling better. You're going to recover your health. Um, if you guys could share this on your timeline and let people know about the thyroid and stress connection, I would really appreciate that. So um, I'm going to continue talking about some of the supplements for the adrenals and want to see if we can get your some of your questions before we do that. Um, Christy wants to know, do you find a link to Hashimoto's and pernicious anemia? Is it underdiagnosed? Um, Christy, yeah, absolutely. You can have both. Um, the root cause of both conditions may be H. pylori. This is a common infection I see in people with Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. We cover it in episode eight. Um, Soon says, when I exercise, I get a migraine. Um, this could be because of magnesium depletion, so I would look into that. Um, Gia says, I don't sweat at all when I work out or exercise. What can I do to make myself sweat more? So this is actually a very common symptom of thyroid disease. Um, one of the things you can incorporate is 
more rosemary into your body and that can help you sweat a little bit more so the spice or herb whatever you want to call it and then also um, doing things like a hot bath or an infrared sauna because when we're not sweating we're not getting rid of toxins and not sweating is actually one of the common things that can happen in thyroid disease and it prevents us from getting rid of toxins. Um, Vicki was asking about episode six. So episode six is just come out tonight and I hope that you'll check into that. Um, let's see here, seeing a lot of your really great questions. Linda, thank you so much for sharing. I really, really appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Really great questions for you, you guys. Um, how do you get plenty of sleep if you have insomnia? So um, one of the things that can cause insomnia could be magnesium deficiency. That's one thing I would look into. And also your adrenal function. So testing, doing an adrenal saliva test would be very helpful to determine what's causing your insomnia. Um, okay. Let's talk about um, some of the supplements that can help support the adrenals. Um, I like to recommend the ABCs of adrenal support, and this is something that's going to be safe for every person with, adre with adrenal and thyroid conditions regarding if their adrenals are overactive or underactive, and even if they're normal. So the A's, the A is for adaptogens, and these are herbs that basically support the adrenal function, whether it's overactive or underactive, they're going to do that. And these um, are things like ashwagandha is one that I really like for thyroid disease, as well as um, maca is another one that I really like. There's additional ones like rhodiola, and we talk about that in um, episode six. Towards the end, Dr. Yuval Ram talks about it. I also have um, a lot of the ones I like to use in my book, Hashimoto's Protocol in the Adrenal section. B vitamins, especially thiamine, which we talked about yesterday, can be very helpful, as well as vitamin C. At bedtime, I like to recommend magnesium citrate. This can be very, very helpful for um, resetting the stress response and helping you get to bed. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, the exciting things that we have happening. So before I forget, we have um, a, a really fun announcement. So we're doing prizes for people that choose to own the thyroid secret. So as you know, anybody that that um, chooses the gold package, our publisher is going to send you a copy of my new book as soon as it comes out. And then for any of the packages, we also have an opportunity to win some prizes. Um, so the prizes for today is one Cooking for Hormones course with my friend Magdalena of Shalaki. So she was the one that did the cooking tutorial with me in episode five. And she's a lot of fun. She's a good friend of mine, um, lives close to me, oftentimes drops off really delicious food so I can I can really endorse her course if you're looking to make some really delicious food that supports your hormones that's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, um, and phenomenal. So she's um, really, really great at, at, at you know, showing you how to address your hormones with food. Um, Magdalena was actually able to reverse, um, put her own Hashimoto's and Graves' disease into re remission with food and also balance her hormones. So this is what she does full-time. We have a signed copy of my friend Mickey Trescott's autoimmune paleo cookbook. So Mickey is, um, you know, one of the pioneering women out there who made this, um, this protocol easy to implement with her wonderful cookbook. Um, and it's got some great recipes that I still use on a day-to-day -day basis. And the autoimmune wellness handbook is another wonderful book by Mickey that um, she just came out with. We also have the autoimmune paleo batch cook program from Mickey, um, which teaches you how to do your own batch cooking with autoimmune paleo. We have a coupon for paleo on the go meal delivery, three phone sessions with Debbie Steinbach, who's the nutrition counselor that we had on in one of the episodes who was able to get her um, Hashimoto's into remission. We have a, a year long membership to glutenfreesociety.org and some copies of Dr. Osborne's book, No Grain, No Pain. One butcher box that gives you um, grass fed meats delivered to your door so you don't have to chase them around the neighborhood. Five copies of Dr. Tom O'Brien's book, The Autoimmune Fix, um, a bundle of the most helpful quality nutrients from Pure Encapsulations, Selenium Benfomax Thiamine, which is B1, Magnesium Citrate, B12 Drops, and Vitamin D. So I'm really excited about that. And then five of my um, brand new autoimmune-friendly 
protein powders. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. They're based made out of hydrolyzed beef protein, which sounds horrible, but it's actually really, really delicious. And you'll um, also get some uh, smoothie recipe eBooks that we developed that um, will show you a delicious way to incorporate these healing smoothies into your diet. And then last but not least, a bone broth starter kit. So a whole bunch of pre-made bone broth that's really delicious from Chef Lance. And so we have 23 prizes to win today with a combined value of over $2,300. You guys received an email about this this morning, so make sure you check into all of your emails because we're always announcing fun and exciting stuff. And this is going to be um, basically if you send us your name and then your receipt number for, um, for owning the Thyroid Secret package, you'll be entered in to win. So we just um, announced some winners this morning for um, yesterday's contest, and we're going to be doing this contest every day until March 9th. So good luck to you. Um, another exciting thing is that we're also supporting a charity with um, every package that we sell and every set of DVDs and every digital product. We're going to be giving a dollar to Down Syndrome Diagnosis Network. Um, so as you're going to learn tomorrow in the pregnancy and fertility episode, um, that a lot of children with Down Syndrome actually have thyroid disorders. And they are ignored by conventional medicine, and they're told that it's normal for them to be sluggish. Um, and all these horrific things that we hear as women and thyroid patients that it's like, oh, you're just getting older, it's in your head, you're depressed, you're, you're a mom, you know, whatever, because um, people tend to ignore us. Um, um, children with Down syndrome are some of the most vulnerable of our population because of their disabilities. They're not able to properly advocate for themselves, and there's a stigma that you know, they should be overweight or that they should be sluggish. Um, and unfortunately, most of them do not get the proper care that they need. And so Down Syndrome Diagnosis Network is a, um, this is a charity that supports children and families um, who have children with Down Syndrome to get them the resources that they need that they could live their best lives and thrive. Um, so I'm really, really excited um, about that um, to get this information out to you guys um, about supporting the DSDN charity um, and you'll get to meet a couple you'll get to meet um, a couple of children that are thriving once they got um, proper thyroid hormone treatment tomorrow um, during episode 7 so I hope that you'll um, check in with that I'm really really excited um, um, I share this in the last Facebook live but I want to share it again because it's really really close to my heart um, I've worked with special populations for um, ever since I was 16 years old. So when I was, um, my, my two first jobs were that I'm the most proud of was working as a pharmacy technician when I was 16 at Walgreens and I was one of the youngest people in Illinois to get certified as a pharmacy technician, which was a big deal. Got certified at age 17. And then um, in the summers and after school, I also worked um, as a special recreation counselor so I, I assisted people, um, you know, we had main like social workers and I was their assistant to help um, plan creative and fun activities for um, children with developmental disabilities. And so I got a, the pleasure of spending time with, um, with quite a few children with Down syndrome, with autism, and um, my job was to make sure that they were, you know, having fun. And I really, really enjoyed that. It was very, very rewarding. During pharmacy school, I had two out of my six rotations were focused with um, special needs populations. Um, so um, pe people, adults with developmental, developmental disabilities as well as um, with children with autism. And when I graduated from pharmacy school, actually I worked as a consultant pharmacist for a case management company that served people with developmental disabilities. And my job was um, consultant pharmacist to make sure that they were on um, the most appropriate medication regimens for them and um, but really I you know I was I felt like their advocate because a lot of times they were not able to advocate for themselves because of their disabilities um, intellectual or physical and they um, oftentimes were over medicated not treated properly um, and you know I um, was actually very inspired by my clients to take back my own health seeing how they gave each day their best and put, um, you know, despite all their struggles and suffering, I had so many clients that were showing up and bringing so much joy to the world. So, um, you know, people with developmental disabilities are very close to my heart. 
I feel like they're the most vulnerable of our population and I really want to support um, children with Down syndrome and their families because um, you know they're not getting the proper thyroid care that they need and and if we could just change that for them I'm so happy to do that so anyway so I hope that you guys um, will check this out we'll be sending out more information about this tomorrow and um, um, you know, just we actually started this in the um, in January, so we just haven't really made a lot of announcements about it. So if you've already decided to own the series, if you've already gotten your package, um, we will still make that donation for you. Um, and then, of course, anything moving forward, we're making a donation to um, Down Syndrome Diagnosis Network on your behalf. So really, really excited about this, um, and I'm really excited for you guys to watch um, episode seven because I think it's going to really touch your lives. Um, the other thing is too, make sure you watch your emails and answer all of our emails and put them in your, um, in your um, like inbox. So take them out of your promotions folder and put them in your primary folder if you have Gmail because we signed up so many people with, um, for the thyroid seeker, we had over 500,000 join this has triggered some of the Gmails and Yahoos to think that we're spammers. Just as when I was answering everybody's questions today, um, I got banned from Facebook because they were like, why is this person commenting so fast so much? And so the same thing with, um, with us sending you emails. And some of you guys have been getting our emails and spam. So please pull them out of there and mark them as not spam and add info at the thyroidsecret.com to your address book. This will send, um, you know, all the email browsers, a message that you actually want to receive our emails. Because you want to open them because we're announcing fun things and surprises. Um, one of the surprises that I'm announcing before you get it an email is that tomorrow I'll be releasing my full entire episode or my full entire interview about Hashimoto. So I want to make sure you check, you check into that as well. Um, Daniela, can I get this in Australia? So you can absolutely get this. Um, so you could sign up to watch tinyurl.com TTSE6. And if you're interested in the gold package, tinyurl.com slash TTS gold. And I have these links in the description of this um, Facebook Live event. So you'll be able to grab that. Um, Leslie says 500,000. Wow, that's awesome. I know. I'm so excited. And if you guys please share this with anybody that you know, um, and definitely the fertility and pregnancy episode, I encourage you to share it with every woman that you know and forward the email that we send out about it tomorrow because so many women are affected by thyroid disease that um, a lot of us unfortunately needlessly lose babies because of miscarriage or will have children born with disabilities because um, of thyroid disease or even have postpartum thyroid issues because of improper thyroid care. Um, soon says fabulous. Thanks so much. Um, or Joanne said fabulous. Thank you so much. Daniela says thank you. Lydia says this has been eye opening. I'm so glad to hear that. Nicola says thank you for all you do. You're very lucky. Thank you so much. You know, I really needed to hear that today. I appreciate it. Um, Emily says you're so inspiring to me. Love your work. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. And then Daniela, so go back to your question, can I get this in Australia? Yes, so the thyroid secret packages are shipping all over the world. So you can get them um, Australia and Poland, in the UK, um, Africa, like we've, we've, got, we've got you covered. Um, the only thing is for the gold package, um, you, can get, you can absolutely get it, everything shipped to you. Um, the book um, is shipping from my publisher and that's a bonus and that's only for the US. Let's see here. Um, you guys are coming up with so many great questions. Um, Eileen says, do you live in Colorado? I do. I do. I live in Boulder. I love it here. It's just, um, I've been here for a little bit over a year and it's great for gluten-free options. Um, we, I will be hosting one, one winner of somebody that pre-orders the Hashimoto's Protocol book to come visit me and Colorado and go to the spa and check out some of my favorite paleo restaurants. Um, Teresa says you're such a gift. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, let's see. A lot of thank yous. Thank you guys so much. Um, Emily says I watched episode one and it's changed my life. My, I'm so, so happy to hear that. Um, Lita wants to know when do you recommend magnesium, selenium, etc. Do you recommend them individually or as a multivitamin? 
Generally, magnesium is going to be at bedtime, and you want to give it at least four hours between thyroid meds. Thanks so much for asking for that, because it can impair the absorption of thyroid meds. With selenium, um, you can take that about 30 minutes to an hour after you take your thyroid meds. Um, let's see here. What is subclinical? What does that mean? Subclinical means when your thyroid condition is um, in the third stage. So there's five stages of thyroid disease. The very first stage is when you have um, the genetic predisposition. Your thyroid function will be normal, but you're just at risk. In second stage, you have the immune system that starts to attack your thyroid gland and cause inflammation of the thyroid gland. And um, at this stage, we're going to see antibodies, but all of your TSH and T3, T4 will be normal, but you're still going to have symptoms. In the third stage, we're going to see subclinical hypothyroidism. At this point, you're going to have the attack on the thyroid gland, and you're going to have a slightly elevated TSH, but most doctors might miss it. In this stage, your thyroid gland is still somewhat compensating for, um, for the damage that it has. It's only slightly damaged by the immune system, but you're going to have a lot of symptoms. In stage four, that's overt hypothyroidism. Your thyroid gland is damaged to the point where it can no longer produce enough thyroid hormones. This is the stage that most people get diagnosed. Their TSH will be elevated and their T3 and T4 will be low. It's really important to make sure that you're, you're doing lifestyle changes as early as stage two um, so you could prevent the damage and prevent the progression because stage five is actually progression to other types of autoimmune conditions. Um, let's see. Great questions, you guys. Um, if you can, um, Alita wants to know what time of day do you take thiamine? Thiamine can be taken any time of day. Um, it's very helpful for giving people energy, so I would say you probably want to take it um, sometime in the morning. Francis says, I would love to meet you. Um, I would love to meet you as well. I'm looking forward to um, getting something together. I had an amazing opportunity to meet some readers when I traveled around the country to record the documentary, and um, it's amazing to see you guys taking action to take back your health and um, amazing to see when you guys start making changes and what kind of things happen in your life. Um, and I'm so excited to share the stories of the people that I met in the documentary series. Um, they're just amazing, amazing people. Um, episode 9 is going to cover on that. Okay, um, looks like you guys, um, how can I buy your books in hard copy? Emily wants to know. So Emily, um, if you go to um, thyroidpharmacist.com protocol, you can pre-order um, the Hashimoto's protocol book, and then they're also available, um, both of my books are available on Amazon. Soon book signing. Oh yeah, I would love to do that. I'll have to get that, see if we could get that set up maybe sometime after, um, after the thyroid documentary series. Maybe we can even do one on Facebook. If you guys would like that, let me know. That might be fun. Thyroid convention. Patty, that's a great idea. I did one. Um, I actually, I don't know if you guys know the story, but I hosted about um, 30 thyroid experts in Boulder, Colorado about in October of 2015, where um, we talked about how to spread more change and innovation in thyroid disease. And we had two days together or three days together. Um, so people that are in the documentary series, pretty much every single one of them is in it that was here. Um, and then plus additional experts. And that's how we actually came up with the idea for the thyroid documentary series was during this thyroid mastermind. So we were sharing some of the best practices. So Shannon Garrett was talking about low-dose naltrexone. Datis Karazin was talking about the brain. Um, Dr. Kirk Gare was talking about cold lasers. I was talking about um, the connection with blastocystis hominis. And all of us were like together and we're like, how do we reach more people and how do we help more people and how do we let them know there's a way to get better? And that's actually how the idea came about. So this was a conference for um, thyroid experts. And we came together to do this. And it was kind of like our own little internal gathering. Um, and I'm probably... Um, so I'm probably going to... So we had an internal gather gathering of thyroid experts. We're going to probably do another one of those again. And um, it would be fun to have you guys there, too, to um, talk about some of the things that we found to be most helpful. 
Um, and Jennifer is recommending thyroid convention on a cruise to Hawaii. I like this idea. Yeah, let's do this. Um, or yeah, I'm, I'm open to that. Um, or if we just want to hang out on the beach in Hawaii, that would be good too. And, and Bahamas, I'm up for that. Um, so you guys, you let me know, you plan it. Um, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> um, thank you so much. And come to Australia. Dan Daniela, I would love to come to Australia. I think this is going to be um, on my bucket list for sure. I would love to come and speak about thyroid conditions there. Is that one snow? Do you think gluten is bad for hypothyroid? Yeah, um, about 90% of people feel better gluten-free. Chris said, I pre-ordered your book. Can't wait to get more answers. I'm so excited to hear that, and I'm really, really excited that it's going to be out in almost just three weeks. Um, I cannot... I cannot wait for you guys to get Hashimoto's protocol into your hands and have the plans. You know, I've, I've been testing and piloting these with my clients over the last few years, and I do see a significant amount of improvement in people and um, people taking back their lives. Um, you know, I, I get like, I get chills just thinking about people saying, you know, there was one lovely woman who was like, I was able to finish my PhD because of, um, you know, your recommendations and people who are able to have children for the first time. Um, one woman was, I really love to share her story because she was had multiple chemical sensitivities to the point where she couldn't go to the mall um, because everything, all this perfumes and stuff that they spray was causing her to have a reaction. And she um, followed the liver protocol in my book. And within the first week, she um, reached out to me and said, hey, I'm at the mall with my kids. And her um, headaches resolved, she had more energy, she wasn't depressed anymore, her joint pains resolved, she was no longer chemically sensitive, and she, all of those things had been plaguing her for years. And then on the next test, we saw that she, um, she actually, her thyroid antibodies reduced as well. And this was something that could be done within like just one to two weeks. Um, and so when I had her and then a few other people having very, very similar experiences, I decided to put this out into, um, all of my clients as a starting protocol, and then I put it out into my um, Hashimoto's course where um, we've had, um, you know, thousands of people go through that now, and I've surveyed people, and 65% of them feel better significantly after this, so I was like, I need to get this out in a bigger way, and that's in Hashimoto's protocol, um, the liver support protocol, as well as two other fundamental protocols on how to ba balance your adrenals and your gut. Um, let's see here. I'm not seeing any more comments from you guys, and my comment feed seems to be stuck. If you have any more questions for me, why don't you chat them in here? Otherwise, um, um, I'm afraid my good graces within the Internet and technology might be over for tonight. Um, let's see here. Mel wants to know, do you, should you do nutrient panels before taking selenium and thiamine? Um, so that's a really good question. And so... Let me go through these real quick with you guys. B12, vitamin D, ferritin, you do want to test for. Selenium, thiamine, magnesium, generally you are not going to test deficient on those, and they're generally going to be very safe for you to use without doing any kind of testing and showing deficiency. Soon said, I should do the liver cleaning as well. I can't wear perfume. Yeah, absolutely. So this is something very, um, very much... Um, related to multiple chemical sensitivities and having that toxic backlog. Okay, let's see. Looks like I froze for everybody. So um, with that, I would say we're going to have to probably hope to see you guys tomorrow night, and hopefully by then the Internet won't be mad at me anymore. And um, looking forward to connecting with you guys a bit more. Thank you again for all of your kind words. Really means a lot to me. And um, I hope that you dial into episode six. We've also extended, extended episode five. So you could still watch that until tomorrow. Um, and if you wanted to have, enter in for any of the prizes and support, help us support charity, um, as well as get a copy pre-ordered of the protocol book, I have a link for you on how to order the gold package in the description of this event. So thank you so much, you guys. Um, this has been really great to chat with you tonight. And um, I really, really appreciate you being here and looking forward to connecting with you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Good night. Uh, and Leslie says, 
have a good night to you and your behind the scenes hubby. He's a trooper. He is amazing. So shout out to my hubby, Michael, who is making sure that everything is going smooth, smoothly. So he's just been an amazing, amazing um, Hashimoto's has been really great. My, my rock and my, um, my great support system. So thanks so much for, for thanking him. Um, he really, really appreciates it. All right, guys. Um, Lita says, thanks so much for sharing your knowledge. I feel like a new person just with the episodes. Woohoo! This is exactly what we're going for. Um, had so much fun chatting with you guys twice tonight. So, um, the first, the first time it was going to, it's going to be our little secret. This chat will be available. Um, so please do share it with anybody, share it on your timeline in case you have people that you think would benefit from this chat. Um, and one more thing before I go, blood sugar is the key to balancing your adrenals and you want to make sure that you're eating, um, limiting your carbohydrate intake and you're eating more fats and proteins. And you could check into that on episode six. We discussed that in greater detail. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.